<laughs> Before having me on the roster, 100 Thieves' main thing, their main issue, was that they could not win a hard point. I'm not saying child that. I'm not saying child caution. I'm saying look in there. I knew for a fact that we had to qualify. I mean, we didn't really have any other options. Nothing right, nothing right, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever called it, I heard one of you guys again, the war machine. Bro, you did, it was you at like 1800. He didn't have it, he was that close. He pulled it out, shot six shots, got one kill because Sam wasn't using black jacket. I didn't one, he, die. What? I didn't die. Yeah. Man. And then he, oh, and then no. literally he killed, he shot like two at Kenny, two at Ian, and then you guys shut it down. Bro, last guy, bro. series he gets a six piece hey, and it changes bro, the game. No, we are in Santa Monica, California at the Red Bull Studios, ready to boot camp. Yeah, close, 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 we were kind of just excited to, you know, be at the Rebel headquarters and just be in the environment. And I felt like we kind of took for granted the actual situation we were in. You know, we practiced, but we didn't practice enough of what we needed to. Whereas this time around, I feel like we're really all five, uh, all six, including our coach Chris, going in, like watching film and really trying to fine tune our gameplay. On the hill is take a full challenge, die, and then they get control of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Nest that close upper, like that close heading by the stairs, like at the bottom of the stairs, like the finesse that, corner. the left corner, and Wait, like shimmy out, like work with each other. You know what I mean? Bro, oh. someone should be holding, someone should be able to hold the outer orange roof so they get, you kill the first guy that tries to get an entry. Yeah. If he grapples in blue, you kill him in the back. If they don't, we play slow, then you're in blue shooting at them. Do so this like, once. If this works, I'm gonna note it down in the scrim thing and just don't do it again. Well, I've done it. You know what I'm saying? I've done it tens and it's definitely worked. All right, so try it again. How does that? It has a weird timing because yeah. of the grapple. So yeah. All right, we'll, well cause his, and I'll start doing the way I view it is like, why, why did you, why did you go back to Elba? Would you? Uh, we're in a two v five. We have no idea where they're coming from. Yes, yes, we, yes, we no, do. We did not. Yeah, Austin, How? if okay, How? rewind wait, 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 it. Wait, the pipes it. right in. So they could, in theory, five hit pipes, right? Yes. They can, so, so they have, so they have two, they have two routes. Mid pipes. Okay, so let's say they have five hit pipes and we're two holding back. They kill us, they spawn there anyways. Well, we, we know this guy's mid. mid. We know the guy's well, mid. What, what I'm the, saying, the so look, if you guys are 2v5 though, right? Ian, right? look, look, look at the map right now. Look at the map, look at the arrows. I know, this is what you're not getting. We're in a 2v5. Wait, after you die, if this guy runs at the back door and kills me, we we lose a spawn. No, I actually don't think that plays hard. You play, you hold this. But if you insta went here, you probably would have killed Okay, but we get two kills on rotation. You don't even know where the other team is. We don't know the other three. three, 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 three. Alright, three kills, but we don't know the other two at. It's a, you, wait, no, I don't, that's not 100% true. What? Let me let me take a different right, oh. let me take a different approach on this here. Let's forget about time. Let's talk about we're trying to prioritize the best back spawn, right? Yeah. Yeah, the last couple months was definitely very stressful. You know, once we didn't place that well in Vegas, where we knew we had to compete at the qualifier. It just made the holidays super stressful just because even though I was confident going into the qualifier, you always want to auto secure your spot. But even the practice going into the qualifier wasn't the best for us. You know, we were getting into a lot of arguments with one another. I knew how important it was to do well at the qualifier and we weren't looking how we should have. So I was pretty worried um, going into it. CWL Vegas ends, we have a couple weeks until the PLQ, and I just could not wait to watch more Call of Duty and just to watch that Hunter Thieves banner on stage and have these players who are incredibly talented representing our brand. I was just excited to watch them play and I was excited to see how this tournament would play out. I mean, the PLQ format that they had this year was really enticing and interesting for me just because there was so much opportunity for so many players who haven't had a shot in the past to become a professional player. And so it really was an event of dreams for a lot of a lot of these competitors and it was an event of dreams for 100 Thieves because if we win this tournament or we qualify we're now a professional team we're locked in for the year and this investment that we made in our team is now real a world where we can compete hopefully for a world championship later this year and I was I was nervous but I was excited to watch more Call of Duty. Welcome welcome everyone it is time for the Pro League qualifier 2018 have headed out to Columbus Ohio. To Going into the PLQ the Pro League qualifier there was a lot of uncertainty, but I knew for a fact that we had to qualify. I mean, we didn't really have any other options. Luckily, we had a pretty easy pool. We kind of knew a team change was necessary probably before the qualifier. 
we just knew that the attitudes didn't, didn't work well with one another and we had to make it work as best as we could. Some of the teams that we were facing off against have never really showed any dominance in any form in any other Call of Duty and there were a lot of teams that we just thought were going to be easy wins, but that was not the case. I mean, that was not the case at all. Game three here. The one thing is, though, they only really need one wipe. This would be a big turnaround, but that's a big kill from Octane. Parzelian goes down. Brack finds Kenny. Jet Lee finds Slasher. Now Enable pushes through. Does have the trophy system. Comes in and saves, and Brack gets a kill. Three versus two. Oh my Brack with another. You have to make the play either the kills, and that's going to be the first Brack. And the boys of Midnight, they are pushing them back. The trade, the bait, the switch comes in, and a 3v9. Midnight shut it down. Oh my. 100 Thieves, 3 Ode. Ah, uh, the first match versus Midnight. I don't even want to mentally go back to that place because that match came and went as quick as it started. I mean, it wasn't even close. And the first map was the telltale sign that a lot of the problems that we were having prior to the PLQ were still very much prevalent. Uh, we had a lot of role issues beforehand, and we had a lot of people doing what they didn't want to do. I had to switch roles, Austin switched roles, uh, Kenny and Jay kept switching. So it was, it was a lot of issues internally, and we couldn't like have any longevity for the roles that we wanted to play, which means we couldn't improve. We are underway. Game number one, a hard point frequency. Largest lead of the game we've seen so far, and it is just going to grow and grow. And to be frank, I don't think 100 Thieves are even going to be able to touch this hill. This one is done and dusted. I knew that this was going to be the matchup that really set the tone for the rest of the tournament. If we could beat Team Space, there's a really good chance that we qualify. With that bomb down, they know both players are out there. line up like that. Come on. You can 1v2. Major Maniac goes for the challenge. He's somehow still alive. Are they going to reach out? Yes, they will. And 100 Thieves in around 11. Tie things up in the series. And somehow, some way, we went 2 2 in a best of five down to this search and destroy. I, I, I failed to see a way you can go 0 2 and then somehow make it in the top two. It's possible, of course. There's a whole different outcome. A whole host of different outcomes, but when Havoc is just running through showers, picking up everyone. It was round after round after round after round. They were just steamrolling 100 Thieves. And for me, that is my worst, worst, worst fear. And this was just probably the worst, like, 20 minutes of my life in, in, in a long time. He's gonna fall, did he the bump? Did just in the nick of time, and it now leads a one versus two. Pharaoh has the Tempest as well, now you got the Annihilator coming out, burning everything, a 1v2. It's gonna be Havoc, if anyone can do it, it's him. But he's gonna get shot in the face by the Annihilator. One out of eight, one out of eight. He's coming in to clear it up, he got a 2v2. This is one one. Both players in showers, they have black. He's able to find one though, it's all gonna come down to Nagafin. He's gotta deal with two ICR players, it's gonna he's be pushed. easy. And he gets Freaks. the streak as well. Oh no! It's happening four in a row back. what's the procedure and somehow some way by a stroke of luck the other team i don't know if they just became gung-ho but they were recklessly using their score streaks and we had a big round we had team space burn their entire set of score streaks in one round and we won that round doesn't call it forces players back first blood from enable that's massive trying to go for the bump one enable's gonna take that roll upon himself it's now a 5v2 there's no way surely there's no way no there's surely no way are you kidding me pharaoh with one it's a 1v3 and 100 thieves take the series in round 11 what a comeback that is from them this wave of just pure bliss came over me and somehow we did it. That was an unimaginable situation. We should not have won that game. We should have been 0-2 in that pool and our tournament would have looked a lot different if we didn't win. So very relieved, but still a lot of tournament left to play. Call of Duty World League. What a game this is going to be. 100 Thieves versus Pittsburgh Knights. Slasher left on the hill. Has to go big for 100 Thieves. Finds one. Where is the cavalry? 232, 245. Pittsburgh Knights are in the hill. And Abel will full one final push from Pharaoh. It isn't enough. And then we face off against Pittsburgh Knights. And short and sweet, we lost. We are now one and two in our pool. With the remaining teams, Pittsburgh Knights was probably the toughest team that we were going to play. And so to lose versus Pittsburgh Knights just for standings sake was not good. It was, it was, it was not good. He does go down, connects with another double. It's a triple mid-map, and Ricky will shut down mid-map. 
and Pittsburgh Knights will shut down the series. Usually when I'm the guy that's either red in or blue in her, like, and I get to that heady, there's really just a Maddox on the caution or the back blue rock. Okay. And they, so what I'm saying is they just tag me up but like I would have to child that though. I'm not saying child that. I'm not saying child caution. I'm saying look in there. The guy just slid in there and killed me. I don't care if we have to dedicate a certain person and do it every time. As you start to shift on that side of the map, you're decreasing the influence on those bad or like good spots for the current one, bad spots for old. And like eventually, if you start pushing up, you spawn them pipes, you spawn them back. Like it's just like that's the stuff that sets the chain in motion. Kenny, you, the, that inner pipe still was insane. Oh, I, did, I didn't see it on like the view, but I saw. I was watching the mini map. I was watching your arrow, and I'm like, how is he still oh, alive? Yeah, yeah, right. We have Chris now, or Crowder, as you guys know, as our coach, and he's probably he's probably the reason that we are where we are right now. With the addition of Chris in the beginning, I didn't realize how big of an, an impact he would have straight out the gate. Like the first day we scrimmed, it was heavily noticeable that he was going to be here for the long term and make us a way better Call of Duty team. I'm coming mid, I'm coming mid. Dead. One more hill, one more hill, one more hill. Okay, Smith, watch out. Oh, there's two on hill, two on hill. Looking left side? No, two of them. Three of them. Nice. Nice, go, guys. I have my grab spikes right down. Nice. So what led me to coaching this year, I was competing in the Black Ops 4 season under FaZe Clan. Ended up not qualifying for the Pro League, which was uh, pretty devastating for all of us, I would say. I just had to make a choice of whether or not I wanted to take the risk to keep competing, did I want to really fall into a coaching role. So I felt like I could help a team out, understand the game, and fix some problems here and there with teams. So I figured I wanted to try and go down that route. You guys pushed out pillars, you made it scrappy, you got the blue. We made spawn. that guy yeah. useless, and then we spawned in the back. Yeah, and then literally he tried to break the blue, like elbow and with the war machine, hit like three people with yeah. flak, nothing. Bro, you guys stay on top of the game, it never spoils out of your hand. You guys get the kills, hop up top, Sam looks over yeah. the guy up top, and if nothing goes right, the guy with the Maddox goes right. Yeah, I'm about to just like drop at the end and then get someone weak and then back up that Ian will challenge and probably kill him. Or, yeah. yeah. So I'm just taking Don't throw your life away. Don't throw your life away. Because it's either I get one and die Bro. or I just get double teamed. Yeah. My name is Preston Grinder. I played for FaZe Clan, but now I'm being loaned from FaZe to Hunter T. FaZe and Hunter T came to a conclusion that they would loan me to Hunter T and I could finish out the season with Hunter T. Everyone on this team wants to win and everyone wants to get better, so I'm super hyped to be playing with the squad. Nice, good luck. Nice, good luck. I'm going to go to the back side. 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 So, like, I feel, but I feel like you guys should commit to something because when you guys do that, where it's like one guy, you. Two guys push you out, one guy platform, you just get collapsed on every time. That's literally what happened, yeah. Our team vibes and just like team in general is like at a good high right now. Crowder, our coach, has made us significantly better. Our arguments and our discussions have been way more productive and we actually like work on simple things and like easy things that should be fixed and we work on them and they do get fixed now. No, I, no I'm telling you if, you, if we double cages to B, we beat them. So it's free kills. You guys like spawned and all you guys went to kitchen and then like the one guy last in line died at wall and then like you guys got ended up getting pinched away. I feel like someone else should help the guy at wall in line. I think that um, our confidence is back because <laughs> that was an all time low <laughs> for a minute. No, it's good to hear, man. Yep. 100 thieves going up against Mazer Gaming. The Hellstorm's coming in. It's only Pharaoh who's anywhere near. He pushes up through window. He needs to jump in. He needs to jump in now. I don't believe what I'm seeing. 100 thieves. Mazer Gaming with the huge comeback. This next match versus Mazer Gaming was probably worse than that 3 0 that we received from Midnight. This is another level. Okay, you found two. You've got a Tempest. Not gonna happen. That is gonna be map number two for Mazer Gaming. We, we were facing off against a team that had an 0 in 12 map count. Mazer Gaming had not won one single map in 12 attempts at this tournament. And somehow we found ourselves down 0 2 versus Mazer Gaming. We lost the hard point and we lost the search and destroy. So before having me on the roster, 100 Thieves like main thing, their main issue was that they could not win a hard point. When I first joined the team, I think the first three days, I wasn't really doing much as a coach. I was kind of standing back and seeing what they do and seeing like what I have to do and like, their problems and stuff. I think they went like four and 15 or four and 16, something like that in hard point where they were just not winning any of the hard points they were playing. After that, we really focused on some of the major issues of what we have to fix the play styles, the thought processes, and once we had like that long team talk, 
it wasn't perfect, but I think we flipped it around from like six and five and 15 or four and 15 or something to like 15 and four. And we started winning the maps in more like dominant fashion, like we should be. Even if we're winning the map, we're still trying to focus on what we're still doing wrong, even in our good points and even in our weak points. We're trying to always focus on everything about improving like one step at a time. Six to nine and Abel Slash and Kenny coming into the mix as well. It's close, but it's favoring 100 T here with 20 seconds left on the clock. A trying to put the contest in. Not gonna happen and fist bumps all round the boys of 100 Thieves. I think something snapped in their minds. They they woke up, they realized that this is about to end. Our season is about to be over before it even began. We need to turn this around right now. As Enable uses the Graf Slam, using all the specialists, using everything in their arsenal, that is gonna be another game. Is the trade gonna come in? The answer's no. Where's the seven kill? Enable with a big Graf Slam, and that's gonna secure it, and that's gonna be a series win for 100 Thieves. We won control, we won the next hard point, we won Search and Destroy. 0-2 comeback, 3-2 win versus Mazer Gaming, and this set us up for the rest of the tournament. And over time, they might just be too far away. Not in church, not in barrels. The war machine is good. 9.2, presence in the zone, but Slash has got himself a war machine. He gets himself two. John. Player coming through kitchen, player coming into the back, but the game is gonna end. 100 Thieves, two hard point wins. From here on out, that match versus Mazer Gaming, I think, snowballed into some success for the rest of the tournament. We faced off against Overtime, we beat them. We faced off against Exhilarate, we beat them. This is the final push. Can they even get in? Kenny's in their base right now, just wreaking havoc. That's going to do it. That's going to seal it. And somehow, after a very shaky start, we ended this tournament four and two in our pool. We finished all of our matches. We played everybody that we had to. Pittsburgh Knights had two more matches to play. If Pittsburgh Knights went two and oh in those matches and they would auto qualify for the pro league and then we would have to go into bracket play and overtime defeated Pittsburgh Knights. And in that moment, all the fear and all the anxiety was washed away because 100 Thieves officially qualified for the pro league. It was surreal. 100 Thieves, we qualified for pro league. Our season is now going to begin, and 100 Thieves is an official professional Call of Duty team for the 2019 season. Uh, Octane, that way. I'm just kidding. Yo, Sam, just know I'll slide in front of you all the time, because I know you got my trade, period, with my piece. You looking over me? Wait, Sam, I'm he slided in. in front of you more than you slided in front Good of him. Good try. I'd be running, I'd be sprinting by Sam, but I don't even say nothing. So I'm like, yo, two, I can't, I can't. Peace. I'm like, I bet. That's all this. Now, if he wasn't getting pieces, I'd be like, Sam, if you don't <laughs> slide not once, do something. Even though it has only really been one change on top of me being added, I just think right now, the way these guys are getting along, they're in a much better atmosphere where they're happy with each other. They're criticizing each other in a productive way, and I think that will really make them in a better headspace going into the future. <laughs> Best looking on the left, you feel oh, I'm eating this bush. There's a lot, of, a lot of weight on all of our shoulders just because we were expected to perform so highly, um, not only from the community, but just ourselves because we, we know the team that was formed in the beginning. I'm happy that it finally feels like we are finally starting to play like that and really prove ourselves to not only ourselves, but to everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Putting on the putting on the LBs, baby. Two repping 225. Oof. You know what it is, Mark. What are you talking about? 225. Repping it. The first week of our pro league is kind of the gauntlet. I think we play Envy and Splice and e United. I think we get a skill check really quick when we get to Columbus. I'm really excited to play with this team. Just want to see how we do a pro league. Pro league's gonna like basically prove how we're gonna do the whole rest of the year. I think throughout the Pro League qualifier, as long as we play like how we are in scrims, I think we'll definitely start getting better and better as the Pro League continues to happen. And then hopefully coming Dallas, we can show our true potential. On all fronts right now, I think this 100 Thieves team has changed tremendously, not just as players, but just as people in general. I think they're putting in a lot of work, and I think you guys are going to see a different team this year. I have my fingers crossed, and I have a lot of faith in this team that we will find success. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but I truly believe this group of players can be the best at some point throughout this year. I believe in them, I have high hopes for them, and hopefully you do too. And hopefully you will continue to support 100 Thieves and be a fan of this team. Roster changes are tough. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see Pharaoh stay on this team, and I'm gonna miss him as a player, 
He will continue to be the top prospect in the Call of Duty community, and he will have a major impact on another team here very shortly, and I wish him all the best. Look, it is no secret that this team has underperformed. In a few short months, we have not played up to our potential in any way, shape, or form, but I truly believe that the way that we've been practicing over these last few weeks and what we did at this boot camp is really going to change the way that we play on stage and Crowder coming in as the head coach and Prisa now adding so much value in the game that he brings individually. I truly believe that this team can go from zero to 100.